Okay, so welcome back to Default Global. Here we dive deep into conversations with global first entrepreneurs and remote work experts, bringing you valuable insights and inspirations. So today we are thrilled to have Gabriel, who is the CEO and founder of Emter. Uh, so thanks for joining us today, Gabriel. Uh, thanks for having me, Vitz. Okay, so before we jump in, um, could you please take a moment to briefly introduce yourself? Sure, my name is Gabriel Pugliari. I am um, default global myself as well. I am an American Peruvian with an Italian dad who huh. lived in Egypt and all over okay. the world. So um, yeah, definitely I'm uh, very much the spirit of the company. I run Enter, um, the founder and CEO here. Uh, we are also a default global company. We're a US, uh, but all across the Americas company that um, started offering services in Peru, but now offers services in nine countries in Latin America and pretty much all over uh, the kind of core economies in the region. Okay, okay, that's a good start. So, um, you know, as like you know already, yeah, we've been helping tech companies expand to various emerging talent markets. And one thing that I see that I've noticed that is that fear is often a major obstacle when it comes to entering these new markets, right? So I assume that Amter to some degree helps mitigate that fear, right? So can you tell us the story behind Amter and the services you offer to companies looking to hire in Latin America specifically? Sure. So uh, specifically, you know, what we do is we've built a technology platform and the business really to help companies uh, that are trying to hire or scale in Latin America, uh, mm -hmm. do this safely, uh, do this quickly, um, and just do it with, with proper understanding of, of the region. No? We actually started off um, in Peru with a small project helping Uber in around 2016. So okay. uh, really our first ever project was actually helping an international company come into the region and start understanding and build a safe and scalable process for them. They were at the time uh, just doing this manually, using customer support people to kind of review people's backgrounds and kind of go over some sort of filter. Um, what we did is we built a series of um, mostly you know, web scrapers as well as different uh, systems on our end and eventually mm -hmm. an API and a dashboard that would mm -hmm. allow people to submit candidates, uh, submit requirements, and then have those reviewed you know, on the different things that, that you could. At the time, then in Peru, it was fairly limited. Just you know, mostly say driving history, driving mm -hmm. information, their license status, and so on. Uh, but uh, it was a success here, and therefore we we started expanding uh, all across the region. Now we started getting calls from uh, no, at the time Uber in Colombia and in other countries as well. And slowly we scaled up to having a full background check really across um, in the different uh, countries that we have now. Um, after Colombia, we scaled up to Mexico, mm -hmm. Brazil, no? and we also did some of the smaller countries like, say, Ecuador, Chile, and so on. And last year, we finally got to Argentina. No? So at this point, we've um, covered most of, the most of the countries there. No? After we kind of scaled with initially Uber and then later growing towards offering um, services towards mostly all of ride sharing. Uh, we um, started expanding towards more traditional um, uh, hiring uh, and mm -hmm. other kind of uh, processes that are mm -hmm. more, let's say, standard hiring processes. And okay. through there, we help um, either local companies, um, large corporates, or international companies that are trying to hire across the region. Especially since last couple of years now, we've been seeing lots of growth in the near sharing. So people offering uh, opening offices in Labam, and we've had mm -hmm. lots of success with those people, as well as well companies that are hiring from the U.S. that are looking for um, good talents in the region. Since now there's there's lots of uh, really good software engineers, lots of really good operators, and mm -hmm. now it's not remote is pretty much the default. Um, we we were able to offer. Uh, no, services to, to companies in the U.S. as well. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, that's a such a cool story. But um, I'm just curious, what led you to specialize in areas like automated background checks and identity validation? Did you have some background like in this area before? So I had, um, I come from say a legal family, so mm -hmm. I, I had a lot of understanding and kind of background in the space broadly. Um, mm -hmm. And I also, uh, my father has worked in technology for quite a bit. So you know, I've always been in computer offices and mm -hmm. just always developing since I was very young. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, so it was, it seemed like a space that, that was interesting to me. Um, mm -hmm. And then once we realized that there was uh, a massive requirements in the space, uh, mm -hmm. that's when we realized that, that there was, there was a, a real business that we could be built there. Okay. So uh, let's, let's continue then. What, what? Types of businesses or, uh, typically seek your assistance at this point. You touched this a bit in your uh, answer, but just uh, would like to go a bit deeper. So we started really mostly with technology companies. No, mm -hmm. uh, initially we were an API, and it was very much built towards um, a technology aware company. Um, mm -hmm. But particularly in the last, say, two, three years, we've started expanding a lot more into uh, just traditional companies now. So anyone that we do need some sort of, say, digital awareness um, mm -hmm. in order for you to easily do background checks. You now you need to be um, speaking to candidates online. You need to have their email. You need to have some sort of digital presence for the candidates. Um, but mostly we, we can help pretty much any company, um, either locally or that is um, you know, hiring across the region. No, we, we still have a strong core of uh, technology aware companies. The companies mm -hmm. are hiring uh, software engineers and things like this. Um, but I mean, we signed a couple of weeks ago uh, uh, a chain of uh, hardware. Um, okay. uh, yeah, so it's uh, in general, it's it's whichever company is interested in kind of beefing up their security and beefing up their, their identity processes and mm -hmm. making just a safer environment for their employees. Okay, sounds good, sounds good. So, uh, like nowadays, this technology is, you know, technology plays a major role in streamlining and improving this hiring process, right? So I'm just particularly interested in how you guys leverage it for background checks in your niche, right? So with that, can you give us a, a sort of rundown of the tech and method you use for automated background checks at Tempter? Sure. So we are a little bit of a hybrid company in, in, in the way that we approach background checks, I would okay. say. So we we started uh, very much trying to build a scalable process. So no, we need to be able to onboard no, thousands of drivers for Uber in Peru, like in the first month. So it was, um, there th There was always a focus on scale and being able to just no, process lots of people. Um, however, because where we started, because we started with ride sharing, um, ride sharing is a very interesting industry that isn't only about um, uh, margins and only like they're not only looking for say the cheapest background check. They obviously need some sort of safety. They're not looking just to say that they did it, but they can get serious uh, reputational risks against them if issues happen. So um, our customers, especially in that space, and then we we were able to expand this expertise elsewhere, um, have always been willing to pay a little bit extra. Um, for an automated check that has um, the expertise that, that we bring in. No? And so what we've done is uh, outside of just the technology, no, we, we do web scraping to find information. Um, we integrate with lots of government websites, um, but we also keep our own copies of lots of information if it's published in a way that perhaps can be um, searched directly. Um, so we, we build these databases but we have a process where any person that is matched and going to be failed will go through a legal expert on our end. Um, we build technologies for this as well. We have a really good kind of internal dashboard uh, that provides uh, all of the movements, all of the information about the process so that we can make a final determination, both based on our experience. No, we probably know more about this than, than our customers in a lot of cases, but also based on our customer requirements. No? Some some customers will have slightly different requirements than others, so there, 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 there isn't a need to configure, let's say. 
Um, I mean, in the end, different customers will have different uh, pipelines, different groups, different requirements. So, so it makes sense. And uh, if we match someone, they will go through this process where uh, we mostly will review the sentence. We'll try to find if there's any sentencing information that could be relevant. And in places where, um, sadly, we can't match things directly to someone's ID, um, like say, for example, in Chile, we can find someone by name, but then we can validate that it, the process does belong to them. Um, in certain other places like Mexico, that's not available everywhere. So what we do is we do a secondary review um, where we look for any homonym um, information and try to assess a homonym risk um, to try to kind of provide as much context as we can to, to, to the person requesting the background check. No? That way we don't reduce the homonym risk to zero, sadly, but we have much better results than uh, most of our competitors that do say fully automated reviews because they can distinguish between a uh, match and a match that can be you know, reviewed somewhere else where there's a news item that can give you an age and that age can confirm or deny the case. No? Okay, yeah, that sounds good. But um, how do you make sure that everything is kind of accurate, up to date and compliant while collecting your uh, this data from different countries, right? Well, you mentioned Mexico, Peru, Argentina, Brazil, and so on. So how do you make sure that everything is kind of in compliant, compliantly, you know, you, 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 you just collect this in a compliant way? Mm -hmm. So what we tend to do is, well, so there are certain systems that we will query on demand. So um, certain background checks we will review um, with the government entity or government entities most of the time um, right then and there. So we will be confirming that up to that day there, there, there are no matches, there is no information in the databases. Um, there are other systems that, yeah, we, we do need to have a um, scheduling system where um, in most cases daily or multiple times per day, we will download any updates to say um, PDF publications or different no, daily bulletins that will come out and we will monitor those and store those um, on a daily basis. No? Um, separately, no, we'll, we will have systems that will, um, again, every day, try to check if we are missing something. No, perhaps a you know, certain date errored out partially and the, the full information wasn't there. Therefore, multiple times a day, we'll be reviewing and checking if we should have dates, if we should have information and um, trying to match uh, and kind of complete that information. No? And then finally, no, in terms of compliance, no, what we tend to try to do is we, I mean, we, we will store the information as, as came from the, the government, we'll have that source, um, but we will also provide um, kind of a context answer for the customer. No? So we both allow uh, people to review the, the source data that we provide while also providing uh, kind of a clear answer so that you don't have to read you know, legal documents to understand kind of at a high level what went on with the case. Okay, okay, that that's clear. Okay, so, um, you know, background checks can, can make uh, or break the hiring process, you know, especially in emerging markets. Uh, and I have heard, you know, some horror stories from my existing cli uh, clients, companies that are facing some issues due to this um wrong background checks right so w what makes background checks so important from your point of view for companies that are planning to hire in latin america so let i mean just firstly latin america is uh, a, a place that sadly has um a lot of inequality no and through that inequality you do get um high fraud rates and, and high cr crime rates so um, just at the basic level, it's it's really important to make sure that you are um, working with the people who they say they are. There are there are really good employees. There are really good people all over the region, but there are, there are also bad actors. So it's 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 very important at a minimum to understand who you're dealing with. Um, separately, yeah, I think it's also um, uh, a serious issue for say internal employees, um, now that you have, I mean, in, in the past, you used to have issues with say physical security. Um, so, I mean, if you're hiring a factory and things like that, obviously that's at the same time, if you are monitoring people internally and you have a system uh, that's um, 
people people inside the factory that that tends to also limit uh, issues no i think now particularly as we move towards a more digital age and more remote working environments mm -hmm. you can also get into the issue of hiring people who don't uh, aren't who they say they are and can also feel that they are able to do things that perhaps they wouldn't do if you could see them right in front of you and therefore um i would say just like you know these companies like uber like didi need this type of technology to to validate their 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 drivers right. at scale um it's also important for companies that are bringing people in uh, remotely to 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 confirm that they that they have they have a clear background no? especially as you no know, we hire people that um uh, now pretty much everyone is a manager no everyone it has some sort of manager responsibilities, even if uh -huh. they're an operator role. And therefore, pretty much every employee that you bring in will have lots of rights and permissions and here and there. And, and it can be very dangerous to have someone that's uh, that's not who they claim they are or that has you know, a dubious background that, that, that they don't want to tell you about. You know? Because in the end, just like um, we, you know, we, we think it's very important to look at someone's backgrounds, um, it's, I mean, uh, th th there are also people that, that can be rehabilitated and things like this. So in the end, what we try to bring in is transparency into the process, no? making sure that people can um, trust that the person who, uh, oh yeah, I was arrested, but only for these things and it was years ago. No, you can actually verify that that's the case and that they haven't been actually coming in and out of jail like multiple times over the year. No? That actually can help you a lot in, ter in terms of kind of verifying if someone's yeah, actually sure. rehabilitated or not as well. For sure, for sure. And just curious, uh, do you have any examples of businesses that, you know, faced troubles because they didn't do their homework on candidates, on talent that they, you know, hired? Well, I mean, I, I can't give you a lot of specifics, but I would say uh, we've had people that had um, criminal justice certificates issued mm -hmm. by say, their local states um, that were clean and um we found not only did we find cases uh, for that person but we found news articles where it said that the person had been stopping people with a with a machine gun rifle uh like, no, really? like um so like really serious cases um mm -hmm. there's also been issues in latam uh there was a, a case years ago um in puebla where kind of a a, a ride sharing driver also passed his certificate and um this person ended up killing someone um this became a massive uh, massive issue because that person actually had a record and mm -hmm. if that company had worked with us at the time we, we we would have found it so that's that's a case that happened in 2016 so very early in the company and that's always been kind of a headline case for me because it, it's it showed me that in the end we could make a difference uh, even if it was just making a simple database query and providing the information. Um, in a lot of cases, we can provide more information than the government can um, because of the processes. Um, in general, as, as well, because we are not limited um, in the same way that some of those certificates can be limited, we can provide information about more than just, say, sentence cases. So mm -hmm. uh, we're able to, in a lot of cases, also supplement uh, processes that are already um, kind of using government certificates as well. Uh, but yeah, those are kind of two cases that, that I remember. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So doing the homework on candidates can save businesses a lot of headaches, right? Down the road. Yeah, yeah that's true. So and now let's let's talk a bit about cost, right? So I can imagine that the cost uh, might be different, you know, for your services that you provide. Can you be, can we go a bit deeper to this? How do you set up pricing, and what what factors affect the cost for different companies and you know hiring scenarios? Okay, so let's start with more or less uh, kind of traditional background checks. Mm -hmm. uh, so a uh, traditional background check in the region will, um, like a manual check that someone goes, will go, a cheap one will be around $50, let's say, and mm -hmm. I mean, you can find things all the way to, say, $200 for kind of more, more exhaustive reviews and just like, more expensive services. Um, those tend to be uh, kind of old style uh, kind of manual reviews that 100 percent will have one person going over databases and manually reviewing things no? um that's kind of the old model that's that, that we that we've been trying to disrupt no um we come from 
again, ride sharing and trying to build a scalable process while at the same time having the, the best background check that we can provide at that price. Uh, so we've looked at trying to, um, we're more expensive than say the very cheap, almost free, just database searches uh, that you can find for cents. Um, but no, we, we want to undercut the manual $50 up to $100. So mm -hmm. our back checks tend to trend between five and ten dollars per check. Um, most of our customers pay under five dollars actually because they buy in bulk or they will um, sub sign up to a subscription that we have. Uh, so mm -hmm. most of our customers tend to sign up for for a standard subscription uh, month on month and uh, just kind of pay for 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 that minimum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you for for that insight. Um, and just speaking about this automated part, right? Uh, automated background checks. Um, there is always a bit of skepticism, you know, when it comes to new technology and to some automated stuff. So, in um, I would love to hear your 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 take on this. How do you put their concerns to you know? Uh, how how do you how do you can um, uh, tell that? everything just compliant you know everything is good even if you're talking about this automated 50 bucks part you know yeah so um i mean so we mostly handle this through a hybrid process no again mm -hmm. it's not only for i mean for 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 regulation reasons for example if you think about gdpr um, mm -hmm. i mean we're not in europe and we're not um yeah we don't have to follow gdpr but we try to follow kind of the strongest uh standards globally so so we will um in general we try to follow no, the, those those standards either in the us or europe and those processes tend to ask for um ma a manual step in case of automated profiling you know? so um just i mean at, at, at the basic level we we try to do this for just the rights of the candidate no i think everyone deserves to um have access to a human that reviews their, mm -hmm. their case, especially if they're getting rejected, no? especially if we're mm -hmm. going to say there's a problem with this person, we need to um, have a human um, review this and say it, no? because most of the time the, the, the automated systems are correct and we will find things. But again, sometimes, like I said, sometimes there is information that is unstructured, that is outside of the system that, that you can find and you can use. Um, sometimes the, there, are, there are gray areas and sometimes there are, there are places that, that do need a little bit more nuance than what computers can provide. So at a basic level, no, we, that's, that's what we do. No? We, we hire legal experts, lots of them are lawyers, but we have people that are legally trained to review these cases and help provide the information. No? Um, and then, I mean, how, on the more automated parts, I think the part that we focus on and then we use the algorithms for and that we, mm -hmm. that we automate is actually what computers do best. You know? Computers okay. are best at searching for data across large numbers of databases and being able to match a single item and then being able to process that and filter it in, in a standard way. You know? And computers are really good at that. So um, we're able to leverage you now this kind of greater availability towards data and greater access. We're able to whenever we match something we immediately bring up all of the sentencing information and we can bring in any of the sentencing documents and that means that our reviews um, can be faster that means our reviews we don't have to spend that much time reviewing a single case because we were able to surface as much information about it as possible um, but in the end that means that we can provide cheaper background checks uh, towards uh mm -hmm. our without mm -hmm. offering worse quality you no know, because we're able to quickly match anything that we find. But if we need more information, we're able to go through that process and kind of provide that level of human contact that really candidates need, you know? Because you, like you said, there's lots of horror stories on, yeah. well, there, there's some horror stories for people that, no, we, the people that, criminals that, that, that go through the, the, the filters or go through no filters and therefore um, uh, we, uh, we need to help. Um, mm -hmm. But there's also the other end, you know, that you can also say, hey, I found this news item, I found this, this information, and it matches your name, and therefore I'm not going to hire you. Um, that can be a very bad experience for the candidates, especially if, if, it's, if it's not their information, if, especially if it's a homonym, you know? Um, so 
companies tend to come to us when, when we have these cases and you know, we, we tend to provide as much, as much assistance as possible. But it's also very important to make sure that your um, any sort of filter, I mean, the background check or any sort of uh, candidate filter um, also provides a, a, a good candidate experience no? because in the end, um, these people are people that are interested in working for you. They're interested in, in being part of the team. And a lot of them will sometimes be part of the team afterwards. And therefore, having a good experience in the background check is, is key, um, even if there's a homonym case. No? Some, th there have been cases that we have worked with companies where we initially found something and then you know, there was some sort of appeal and we spent more time looking for the process, looking for more information. And mm -hmm. in the end, with everything that we found, we were able to help the customer make a decision and that person ended up getting hired. You know? So um, that's, that, uh, having a, that experience and having a good experience especially if you're going to end up hiring that person is, is going to be key. You know? So not matching things that you shouldn't be matching or being able to properly exclude information that should be excluded um, is going to be key in there. And, and we also help on that, you know? not only finding things, but also being able to discard information that um, maybe isn't relevant or is not, not belong to the person. You know? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it's clear that Demter has taken the time to make sure that the process is effective and trustworthy. So, yeah, I appreciate that insight. So, um, <clears throat> you, you also mentioned that um, uh, some part of your, uh, some portion of your clients, uh, they they also expanding in uh, Latin America. Yeah, so in uh, was, w w I have a question in terms of this remote work and global hiring like a trend, right? So with remote work and um, global uh, um, uh, workforce on the rise, right? Have you noticed that any kind of shifts in demand for your services, right? So for example, because for us, the last couple of years, it was kind of, you know, the last couple of years were just, were just great, you know, or we see that it's becoming a sort of mainstream, you know, f at least for some industries, and, and mostly we're talking about technology space, mostly we're talking about early stage startups, right? So they're trying to cut their costs, but still they need the, the best of the best. And for that reason, they just go to Latam, they go to uh, Europe, and they're looking for the best talent. I'm, I'm just curious for you, um, have you noticed any kind of shifts in demand for your services with this uh, new trend for global hiring and remote work? So yeah, the short answer is definitely yes. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's an interesting for us because we are that type of company and we have been since 2016. So we, we are a US company that is hiring remotely all across the region um, okay. since the start, really. Uh, uh, so. Uh, like yeah, we, we we know a lot about this and kind of mm -hmm. how, how to do this. Uh, but particularly, yeah, I think particularly since the pandemic, um, there's been a large shift in how companies uh, see uh, hiring remotely and 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 see um, kind of offshore hiring in that way. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, definitely, I think we still see this mostly in I would say the larger countries in the region. So definitely, mm -hmm. where we see this strongest is in Mexico, in Colombia, mm -hmm. and then. I would say there's a separate kind of, um, especially for, for technology, um, there's also a separate group um, that we consider you know, from Brazil and Argentina in particular that are being hired internationally. Uh, but I mean, this is actually something that's happening all over the region and you know, also applies to smaller countries like Ecuador, Peru, and Chile, where you know, we've also been seeing companies hiring uh, internationally. You know? And again, yeah, this is mostly companies in the US, I would say, that are looking for. Um, looking for uh, just remote hiring, but we've also been seeing more and more companies that are working as, say, middlemen or recruiters or people helping companies mm -hmm. space. And uh, uh, there, we've also gotten a lot of success with, with those those companies because I think particularly they need, um, if you are, say, offering an engineer, if you're offering uh, an operator to, to a company in the US or Europe, uh, you want to present them with uh, as much, say, uh, credibility as possible. Mm -hmm. yep. Having you know, a passing background check from us is, is a great way to show that you know, at a minimum you've done your homework on, on the candidate. Okay, yeah, makes sense. And what do you think uh, the future of, you know, hiring uh, looks like? I and mean, how is Amter getting ready for, for those, you know, changes? So I think 
the trends are, are mostly very clear. No? I think it's uh -huh. uh, probably more of the same of this this changes. Uh, so I think in general we will continue to be seeing uh, kind of hiring remotely, and we will continue to see probably um, higher salaries all over the region because uh -huh. as we start um, going over to U.S. companies and, and working internationally. I mean, this is something that. If you, I mean, if you, if you if you were in the industry, you probably had seen already now five, ten years ago. Some of the best engineers in the in the region were already working remotely. So it's right. something that's mostly in the past. It was kind of for exceptional people that kind of could convince and kind of had the right uh, uh, background. But now that companies are more um, suited for hiring and working remotely and working off uh, outside of the office, um, mm -hmm. I think the trend is just gonna go more and more. No, I think we, we you still see most companies working mostly from offices, mostly. Um, but especially, I, I would say, for larger companies that have, say, multiple offices, that have a kind of satellite offices, that mm -hmm. just work in a way remotely already because you're working with people from outside your right. office or in a different country, even if they're part of the same company. Um, I think that's that trend is going to gonna increase. No? I would say also, I think with kind of the whole AI craze, I would say that we're going to be seeing more and more companies that are um, able to stay small, but also kind of produce and build lots of things. And I think those companies are going to be um, very easily able to hire um, no, ac across the region because they tend to be just already very much digital natives. And I mean, if you if your company has multiple uh, kind of AI agents working for you, you you probably also have multiple kind of remote employees all over the region because right. uh, text is not a universal interface. So um, so long as you can talk to people, uh, I would say you, you can work with them. Yeah, hundred percent agree with you. So what we see on our end that the best uh, the best engineers, the best tech talent, they want to work directly for the best companies, right? And the best companies you can find wherever you can find in Silicon Valley in the United States and they want to work for them. And that's a good good trend that those companies are kind of open to hiring guys from Latam, from Europe. We see this uh, all the time in BC that it's kind of becoming a trend and it's 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 a, it's a it's very good news for 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 both i would say for companies that are looking for the best talent and for those talents right and the the the, the w what we also see is kind of inside that uh we see that talents the, those uh, senior engineers they do not want to work for middlemen like you know like outstaffing agencies staff augmentation agencies or outsourcing companies and that's a kind of uh, i guess big problem for those guys they because they still they 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 cannot hire those those top talent for uh, anymore you know and yeah so we'll see a big transformation i guess in this especially yeah. in the tech space i would say definitely the I mean, the, the companies are yeah, doing this type of kind of middleman work um, for uh, no, uh, development type processes will, yeah. will at, at the minimum, struggle because of higher salaries. No? It's something that we've seen um, all over the region, especially you know, over the last five, six years. We've always paid very much, um, kind of, I mean, not directly U.S. Silicon Valley salaries, but we've, we've always indexed ourselves to right. kind of a, a regional um original price, uh, but definitely companies that were paying the local price for local engineers are going to struggle to find uh, kind of young people that are, that are keen and going through that path, because now it's just as easy to find uh, you know, a job um, offshore or a job with, with, with a company that is selling services across um, borders, and those companies will tend to pay a lot higher. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Okay. So we are, I guess we're running out of time. So, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Gabriel. It was really a great pleasure to meeting you with you today. So I appreciate your time and see you next time. Thanks. It's been a pleasure chatting and yeah, happy, happy to come back anytime you need and discuss these things. It's, um, yeah, what, what we do and, uh, lots of fun. So thanks. Thank you very time. much. Thank you. See you. Bye.